The first step was the decision that this nation's first venture into manned space flight should be a peaceful civilian effort. Here our intent is to launch him, to determine to what extent he can perform a useful function in outer space, and then of course we want to recover him safely. These ladies and gentlemen are the nation's Mercury astronauts. A man, in order to take this type of flight, must be in superb physical shape and good condition as a uh, as an athlete must be the pressure suit consists of a hard white helmet with a visor a uh, transparent one, rather reminiscent of a medieval knight in some ways, uh, and uh, a rubber suit, which doesn't look at all rubbery. It's quite light and flexible and has this silvery outer coating. Well, I think the most important problems have been just in learning about the vehicle and getting ready for it. If there is a emotional problem of any sort, it is just in getting the chance to fly. They're tired of waiting, they're ready to go, and they've been ready to go for some time. And if there's any psychological problem for them, it is the problem of waiting, of getting the chance to do this very exciting thing. Well, certainly the major training problems will remain the same as they are. That is, to know the vehicle, to know all the systems very well, to know how to navigate how to control attitude. The test out at Dr. Lovelace's uh, place at Albuquerque out there, uh, certainly some of the tests we had out there were the most trying. And it's, it's rather difficult to pick one because if, uh, if you figure how many openings there are on the human body and how far you can go in any one of them. <laughs> Now, you, an you answer which one would be the toughest for you. <laughs> well, I think John Glenn answered the question pretty well. Uh, and perhaps carry it a little bit further. not playing games, this is serious business. And you can't just face up to this thing and say, we're going to, as Mr. Donlin said, put a million dollars in a can and fire it into space. It's nothing like that at all. You don't make a program out of something as crude as that. Uh, this is a, a professional program. We're trying to do something with it. And most people who have asked me, uh, why are you in this idiotic program? I immediately say, if you'll take a little bit of time to think about it, to study it, you realize that this is something that we're very serious about. That a little, uh, little race between Gagarin and me was really, really close. Obviously, their objectives, uh, their capabilities for orbital flight were greater than ours at that particular point. We eventually caught up and went past. We 
we had flown a chimpanzee called Ham in the Redstone Mercury combination, and everything had worked perfectly except there was a relay which at the end of the powered flight was supposed to eject the escape tower because it was no longer needed, separate it from the mercury uh, capsule and eject it. For some reason, with the Ham's flight, it fired, but it did not separate itself. So the chimp was lifted to another 10 to 15 miles uh, in altitude, another 20 or 30 miles in range. There was absolutely nothing wrong with anything else wrong with the mission. So our recommendation strongly was, okay, let's put Shepard in the next one. Everything worked fine. So the thing happens again, no big deal. Shepard goes a little higher. Werner said no. He said we want to have everything absolutely right. So we flew another unmanned mission before Gagarin flew, then his flight, and then mine. So what it was, it was really touch and go there. If we'd put me in that unmanned mission, then we would have actually flown first. But it was, it was, it was tight. <laughs>